My name is David Ndane. I'm an investigative journalist from Nigeria and I'm constrained to send out this public appeal to the Ghanaian government, to Ghanaian President Anaku Fado, the Ghanaian Minister of the Interior, Honorable Ambrose Berry, and to the Chair of the Ghana Refugee Board, Prof. Kenneth Atafua. Um, I fled Nigeria in 2020 and um, I applied for asylum in Ghana in early 2021. Um, in May 2022, I was granted um, refugee status in Ghana. Um, consequently, I was also issued a Ghanaian refugee travel document, a refugee passport, which I have subsequently used extensively to travel across Africa and around the world. Now, um, last month, when um, there was the ongoing um, back and forth between uh, those who wanted to go to war uh, within the ECOWAS bloc, those who wanted to go to war with the, um, the coup regime in Niger, and those who didn't, um, something happened. Um, the Nigerian president, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, um, made a move to deploy Nigerian special forces illegally um, into Nigerian territory to enforce a no-fly zone, which is a euphemism for essentially staging a military attack, an unprovoked military attack against an independent sovereign nation and a friendly country to Nigeria. Um, as, as was expected, most people um, in the Nigerian government, in the Nigerian military, and in the citizenry at large weren't at all on board with this. But the Zatunambu was clearly desperate to start this war with Niger, a war that nobody wanted. Subsequently, a secret document was leaked to me, a document which contained um, basically um, attack instructions and uh, uh, basically um, staging um, plans for this illegal invasion of Niger. And I knew that by putting this document out, I could potentially stop a catastrophic invasion, which would lead to an immense and unnecessary loss of West African life. So that's exactly what I did. Um, early August, um, I put out this document. And um, it had the desired effect. It did, in fact, stop the invasion. Um, subsequently, Mr. Tinubu then tried to seek um, uh, permission from Nigeria Senate to deploy the Nigerian military into Niger. The, the, the Senate knocked this back. Um, and to all intents and purposes, um, the invasion essentially um, became a stillbirth, right? It didn't happen. Which, from the point of view of, I think, any right thinking person in the ECOWAS sub region, was definitely a good outcome, right? It, what definitely, under no circumstances, should have happened should have been a military invasion of Niger by Nigeria, leading to an outcome that no one would have been better off. Well, I could spend an hour explaining the many different ways that this would have been a terrible idea, but I'm sure most people know this just as well as I do. It would have been something that would have been catastrophic and would have benefited nobody except probably Mr. Tinubu himself. Now, after I leaked this document, I, I was made aware um, from several sources that the Nigerian military establishment and the Nigerian um, intelligence establishment uh, be became essentially um, particularly um, enraged with me. So I've been a person of interest for a long time, but um, with that, I became um, designated as something of um, an enemy of state. And um, as my, you know, as fortune or luck, bad luck would have it, um, just a month before this happened, uh, the fact that I in, I do travel with a Ghanaian passport, that I have a Ghanaian passport and I travel with it, um, had become exposed to the public through no fault of my own, um, following a, a very unfortunate event in Zimbabwe, after which the permanent secretary at the Zimbabwean Ministry of Information, uh, probably thinking that he was scoring a point against some sort of um, uh, foreign journalist you know, following their issues with foreign journalists, decided to tweet to a global audience the fact that um, I, I did claim asylum in Ghana and that I, I travel with the Ghanaian travel document. As a result of this, the Nigerian um, establishment knew 
who to speak to if they um, wanted to get a hold of me. They were aware that I had claimed asylum in Ghana and that I used a Ghanaian uh, travel document. So I was informed that a, um, a Nigerian intelligence agency, I'm not sure whether it was the National Intelligence Agency or the Defense Intelligence Agency, but one of these um, foreign intelligence um, uh, institutions dispatched a jet to Accra to um, basically have me illegally rendered to Nigeria. Uh, apparently they sent, they wrote a letter to the Ghanaian government accusing me of um, apparently aiding terrorism by supposedly um, revealing the locations of soldiers. And apparently um, I was also guilty of treason, whatever that means. Now, um, it seemed as if the matter was going to end there. But uh, more recently, I've come to find out that the, the Tinubu government is still trying very hard to um, to enact some sort of um, illegal rendition. So the latest tactic apparently is to lean on the Ghanaian government um, and accuse me of having apparently sabotaged an ECOWAS mission and in, in, in so doing, um, basically uh, compromised the block security of the ECOWAS region, in which case Ghana, being itself an ECOWAS member, is then obligated to um, cancel my asylum, to revoke my refugee status, and to, and to revoke my Ghanaian passport. Um, the Nigerian government's hope is that in revoking my passport, um, whatever travel privileges or visa or residency privileges I enjoy anywhere in the world will be, um, will be compromised. And as a result, um, um, it will then be more possible for them using the various avenues that are available to obviously a nation state to um, to have somebody extradited or to have somebody illegally rendered. In this case, a journalist who fled the country because of his work and claimed political asylum in another country and gained full refugee status. Um, but the Nigerian government obviously has no problem trying to flout international law in this way. Now, um, the reason I'm making this appeal publicly to the Ghanaian government and to the individuals I mentioned at the outset is because I'm aware that even though um, the Ghanaian government, as I mentioned, has a you know very, relatively great track record when it comes to obeying international law and um, not, um, not behaving obnoxiously in the international space, which was why I chose to claim asylum in Ghana in the first place, I'm also aware that there is an, there's a limit to which Ghana might be able to resist the cajoling or the bullying of Nigeria, which obviously exerts a lot of influence over the Ghanaian government. So um, I thought it would be prudent to put this out there. Um, I know that again, the Nigerian government um, is trying to do all of this in secret, which is why you know, I was only able to obtain this information you know, through a fashion, right? This isn't information that is out there, but I'm putting it out there on purpose, uh, hoping that it makes some kind of a difference because um, at the end of the day, um, I do believe that um, just the same way as, you know, Ghana had every opportunity to, uh, to give me up in the first place. When I came to asylum in Ghana, there was every opportunity to use me as a diplomatic bargaining chip with Nigeria if it wanted to, but I know that Ghana is not that kind of country. I know that the Ghanaian government um, historically has a lot of respect for international law. The Ghanaian government historically has a very strong um, Pan-Africanist outlook. And the Ghanaian government generally tends to um, lend itself to being a, um, a safe haven for people who are fleeing political persecution. Um, Welcome to my channel, where we discuss everything and all things politics especially about the 2023 presidential election held in Nigeria on February 25, 2023, and the result controversially announced on March 1st, 2023. And that result is being challenged right now at the Supreme Court after the presidential election petition court gave it verdict on September 6th. 
Now, one of of Nigerians, one of Nigeria's best known journalists, an investigative journalist of repute, who played a key role in the 2023 presidential election is David Hundiye. David is a crack investigative journalist who has done a lot of work in his area of specialization that he has won several awards. It was David Hundiye who exposed so many things about the presidential candidate of the APC, Aswadbola Metinubu, who was eventually declared the winner of the election by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Controversially, on March 1st, 2023. Why did I say controversially? Because INEC promised the opposition parties who were protesting at the Coalition Center, National Coalition Center at the International Conference Center, that they are going to look at their complaint. Remember, go and watch the video. You see where Dino Melaya, who was one of the uh, representatives of, of uh, the People's Democratic Party, was, was opposing the way that the results were being collected and himself and several other opposition parties eventually staged the workout because of the, the process of the coalition was not going the way it ought to. Now, the Annette chairman promised to look into their grievances, the issues they raised, because they were announcing the results that were not reflected at the uh, at the INEC area. And the Dino Melea was raising that matter, along with all the Labour Party people and all the rest. INEC chairman promised to look into their matter. And they didn't do look into that matter. Instead of looking into their complaint, right in the middle of the night or early in the morning of March 1st, they announced the result and told them to go to court. Now, one person that was critical in bringing up a lot of, digging out a lot of things about the presidential candidate of the APC is David Hundie. He did a lot. In fact, if you go to YouTube now, you can see the documentary he did on uh, Bola Metinubu. You can see it there from drug lord to presidential candidate, something like that. He was the one that brought out the issue of alleged certificate forgery. In fact, many of the information that Atiku Abakar used in challenging. Tinubu's uh, certificate that he submitted to the INEC emanated from information that came out from David Hundie. And even David Hundie has, is the person that applied to the United States government to release details of all the information, security details that the CIA the FBI, American Tax Authority, and what have you in America, to release details of information about the Asadibola uh, Metinubu, which was granted to him. And by October, the American authorities had already promised the FBI to start releasing documents on the president that are domiciled with all these uh, 
institutions, including the State Department in the United States. So, he is a major stakeholder and he played a role in the election and after the election. Because all the information he brought out is still playing a part in what is going on. I can tell you for free that if not for the information that emanated from David Undien, Atiku Abaka would not have won the recent battle he won in America, in which the court compelled the Chicago State University to release all the academic records of Tinubu to him. And the court also said that the Chicago State University must submit under oath, must state under oath, whether the certificate that Tinubu submitted to the ANEC is authentic or emanated from them. So that's how critical David Hundin had become in Nigerian politics. Now, David Hundin, I didn't know this, but a recent the video he released, he was he also said that as a result of his intervention. Nigeria was making a claim, he alleged the Nigerian government of Aswadbola Tinubu was making clandestine move to invade the Chile Republic without telling anyone. But he stumbled on the document of the plot. That's what he alleged in the video that he released. He said because of that, he has now, he was exposed, his location was exposed, and now they found out that he was having uh, under asylum, living in Ghana with Ghanaian passport, travels with Ghanaian passport, but as a refugee, as, as somebody who is on asylum from his country, who ran away from his country for his own good, for his own safety. They ran away from Nigeria since 2020, 2020. And you know a whole lot of things happened in 2020. Who will forget about the incest killings? And the reason why so many people that played a role in that ran away from Nigeria in order to save their lives. So he alleged that Nigerian government now found out that he stays in Ghana. Now because he stays in Ghana, they have, since they found out they stayed in Ghana, he alleged that there are now plots by the Nigerian government to rendition him from Ghana and bring him by force to Nigeria, which is almost the kind of thing that was done to the, the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Namde Kano. That's what he said that they are plotting to do to him. So he, he, he shouted out, he cried out for help and did a video to tell the world that look at what I'm facing. Now, why is he scared? He said that he's scared because Nigeria may want to exert influence on the Ghanaian authorities, on the president of Ghana, and force them to expose him so that he will be renditioned. And he is crying out that if he is renditioned, that he don't think he will come out of it alive. So Hunduin is shouting out, he's calling on the Ghanaian authorities not to make themselves available to be used by the Nigerian government. He mentioned the fact that Ghana had always been a safe haven for dissidents, for those who are seeking asylum, for those who have been perse persecuted in, his, in their countries. He confessed that even right now in Ghana, there are so many people who are running away from being killed in their various countries, from being 
prosecuted because they are journalists, because they are doing their work, and the governments of their country are planning to kill them, and they run away to Ghana to seek asylum, to seek protection. He said that Ghana had always been a servant, and I agree with him. If you look at the history of Nigeria, you find out that Ghana had always been a safe haven for Nigerian asylum seekers, especially those who have been persecuted by the government of the day in Nigeria. Who will forget that Dr. Namdi Azikiwe was an asylum seeker in Ghana when he was being persecuted, when they were trying to deal with him by the colonial masters because of his vociferous nature, because of his campaign for independence. Namdi Azikiwe had to run to Ghana. And Ghana protected him. Ghana supported him. And of course, he helped in building Kwame Nkrumah to become what he eventually became. And Namdi Azikiwe not only got, went to Ghana to, for protection and everything, he blossomed in Ghana, established newspapers in Ghana, the West African pilot and what have you. So when I saw Hundi recounting the fact that Ghana had always been a safe haven for, for dissidents, for those who are opposed against the government of the day in Nigeria, and he did around the world, he was, he was speaking the correct thing. Now, Hundin said that his life is in danger. In fact, he, he claimed, he alleges, that if anything were to happen to him, that the government of Nigeria should be held accountable for his fate. So, he has cried out for help. He has shouted out for help. I think the onus is now on the Ghanaian authorities, the president of Ghana, to listen to him. To listen to him. He said he is seeking for help. He is seeking for protection. He is seeking for safety. And Ghana is under international obligation to protect somebody like that. Ghana is not supposed to sell him out. Ghana is supposed to protect him. Ghana is supposed to give him succor from persecution that he was running away from Nigeria since 2020. So I think that video he has done has gone a long way to provide a kind of shield for him, but I don't know how long it will last. That's why himself is concerned. So David Hundin is concerned about his safety. So I think uh, those who cherish human rights, those who cherish freedom, those who cherish protection of life, those who believe in the rule of law, I think they should shout out prayers for the protection and preservation of David Hundiyin right there in Ghana. And that let help come for him, for him in Ghana, let the Ghanaians continue to protect him. And he already he has already also talked about uh, other nations. Now, now that he is in a position like that, perhaps some other countries may decide to take him away from Ghana. That would be interesting. I don't know whether that's what he will want, but I think having been exposed like this, uh, maybe it's better, it would be good for him if another country takes him, grants him uh, uh, residency, because right now he says he has a permanent re he has a residency in Ghana. He's using the Ghanaian passport as a result of his acceptability as a refugee, as somebody who is running from being prosecuted, being killed in Nigeria. So that's uh, what this video is about.
to uh, whoever watches this, who is concerned about human rights, who is concerned about uh, rule of law, and uh, who is against illegal rendition of people, that they should uh, uh, see how they can assist him to get to be, to be secured in Ghana, and how to also uh, appeal to the Ghanaian authorities not to not to succumb to any pressure, any intimidation from Nigeria and expose him to danger. I think that's basically the essence of the video that he made. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel, I hit the notification bell. Anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.